Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are given. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Isaiah, there will be no gloom for those who are in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm appointed for today is Psalm 27, Dominus Illuminatio. We will recite the verses as listed in the insert to our bulletin today, responsibly by half verse. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? One thing have I asked of the Lord, one thing I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the fair beauty of the Lord. And to see to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble he shall keep me safe in his shelter. He shall hide me in the secrecy of his dwelling and set me high upon a rock. Even now he lifts up my head. Above my enemies, I will be. Therefore I will offer in his dwelling an oblation with sounds of great gladness. 
Hearken to my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. You speak in my heart and say, Seek my face. Your face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not your face from me. Nor my face pleasure. You have been my helper. Cast me not away. Do not forsake me, O God, of my salvation. Corinthians. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was crucified? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with elegant, eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message above the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now, when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. 
And he said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Being a fisherman is a very special way to earn a living. Uh, most of you know that I came here from the great state of Maine and from the town of Southwest Harbor, which by tradition is a lobstering and fishing village. And if any of you ever decide to retire and move to a Maine coastal village, let me give you a piece of advice. Don't live on the road going to the harbor because the pickup trucks of the lobstermen and the fishermen start going by your house at about four o'clock in the morning. They get up early. It's, it's a strenuous life. And yet, these families of lobstermen and fishermen have been lobstermen and fishermen for generation upon generation upon generation. There is something about being out on the water, something about earning your living by the sea, by, if you will, what God provides to you that is like no other way of earning a living. So, aside from the fact that the story of the calling of the disciples in our gospel passage this morning sounds pretty bizarre to us, if you know fishermen, it's even stranger than that. It's hard to believe that as hard as the work is, any fisherman would just drop their nets the minute a stranger walking by calls out and says, follow me, I'll make you fish for people. And yet, there had to be something that provoked that kind of immediate response from them, dropping their nets, leaving their father in the boat, and following Jesus. So what was that? We know from the passage this morning that after John the Baptist was arrested and thrown into prison, Jesus got out of town pretty fast. He did not stick around, he went back to the direction of his ancestral home up near the Sea of Galilee, up near Nazareth. And he begins his public ministry of preaching, teaching, and healing about what he refers to as Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. He begins preaching and teaching about something called the kingdom of heaven. And this is a new expression. The kingdom of heaven is not something that shows up in Jewish scripture. It's a phrase that is specific to the gospels, to the teachings of Jesus. Repent. Stop what you're doing, change your life, turn and go in a different direction. That's what repent means. He's calling on people to radically change their lives. Why? Because this thing called the kingdom of heaven has come near. 
Although the kingdom of heaven doesn't appear in the Jewish scriptures, the Jewish scriptures do talk quite a bit, especially in the books of the prophets, about someone special, an anointed one, anointed by God, sometimes called the Messiah, often phrased as God himself coming to save his people. And there was a, an, an attitude of expectation that the people of Israel had carried in their hearts for thousands of years. And I think it must have been intensified during this time period when they are living under Roman occupation. So it begins to become a little more understandable why someone's saying the kingdom of heaven has come near, the day of the Lord is approaching, change your lives, might elicit a response in those circumstances. What about us? The kingdom of God has come near and is here now. As it says in one place in the gospel according to Luke, when the disciples are asking about the kingdom of God as though it was going to occur at a specific point in time and in a particular place. Where is it? Where can we find it? Jesus responds, the kingdom of heaven is not here or there. The kingdom of heaven is among you. What's happening as Jesus begins his public ministry, not only of preaching and teaching, but of healing, of transforming people's lives in relationship, through relationship, is he begins something that will inevitably lead to his death on the cross because he is transforming how people understand who and what God is like, and he is transforming how people live in community with each other. And that applies to us just as much as it applied to those folks living on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. Follow me. I'll make you fish for people. Follow me. Repent, change your lives. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It has come near. It is here now. And ever since that day on the shores of the Sea of Galilee, the message has been the same. When we get to Paul's letter to the folks in Corinth, we have the first indication of the challenge that I believe all followers of Jesus are faced with. I've lost track of how many different Christian denominations there are, but there are a lot. I remember driving down east one morning when I was uh, taking a, a service down in Machias. It's about a two-hour drive, and um, and sometimes the you know the further out you get, the more interesting the church names become. <laughs> and this one church, um, never forget it, the, the sign was something like uh, the Orthodox Apostolic Church of Jesus Christ, and, and, and it just, it went on. The name of the church was like four lines across the sign. I didn't go check them out. But the issue that Paul was addressing in Corinth is the same issue we face today. I joke about there being, you know, Baskin Robbins 37 flavors or whatever it is, that there's a flavor of Christianity that's, you know, going to make you happy. You just have to keep looking until you find it. And yet, what Paul says to the people in Corinth, I think applies to us just as well. We need to get beyond the surface differences and distinctions that we make among our brothers and sisters in the faith. Okay, that's not my cup of tea, how they do it over there, but they're following the same Lord and Savior that I follow. Repent, he says. 
Not like, oh, I'm so sorry I did that. But as in, wake up, look up, look at your life, and follow me. That's what we're called upon to do. That's what we're challenged to do, is every day, get up and follow Jesus. I think the only point of agreement among all of our various expressions of Christianity is what we'll do right after I stop talking, and that's we're going to say the Nicene Creed together. Because the Nicene Creed is shared, as far as I know, among every expression of Christianity throughout the world. It goes back to some of the earliest meetings of the church when people were arguing and squabbling about, well, is Jesus human or is he God or is he a little of both? And how do we, how do we mesh this with God the Father and the Holy Spirit? Are there three gods or one gods? There were knockdown, drag out fights about that in the early days of the church. But eventually, eventually, all of those folks worked through the disagreements and the arguments to come up with what we call the Nicene Creed, the very core and essence of what we believe about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And it's that core belief that we share with all brothers and sisters who follow Christ throughout the world that is what we are called to live out in our daily lives as well. So however you experience that call of Jesus, you're here on a, a, a well, the weather's interesting today. You're here on a, a cold, snowy day in Northeast Ohio when you could be home with your feet up in front of the fire or uh, having a Bloody Mary or whatever it is you do on Sunday morning when you're not here, no judgment. But you made a choice this morning to get up and to come here. To come here not just to hear me blather on, goodness knows, not even just to receive the bread and wine. But part of what receiving that bread and wine is all about is the sharing of the life of the risen Christ within us and among us. Just as Jesus called people into communion and community with him so many years ago, he still calls us into communion and into community with one another. And that communion and community is worth dropping whatever kind of nets we are tending in our lives and following him. Amen. Amen. So let us, with Christians throughout the world, Join in affirming our shared faith in the words of the Nicene. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God from God.
prayers of the people this morning are given in form three, appearing on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that Peter and Sandy Batchelor, Stuart Bates, Ramon and Jane Battles, Richard Beeman, and every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your words and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on the people of Ukraine and all those for whom continuing prayer has been requested. Terry Dottel, Carolyn Risco and family, Shirley Craig, Jan Trotter, Baz and Mona Baz and family, Lloyd, suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to Lynn and Bob Fisher and all the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Suzanne Emerson. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in God, word, and deed by, by what we have done. done. And by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved you and made us as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we are For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Have a seat when you're ready. <coughs> Becky, you want to announce uh, what you announced today to come on? Yes. So I have my props right up here, so I didn't have to lug it. No, and still have not bought a calendar. These are 2023 calendars that um, Randy and Debbie Cole put together. Randy did a lot of photographs. They're always beautiful. He does this every year. And all of the proceeds go to outreach. Um, in the box that I'll put back into the guild room is this envelope. They're $20 each. It can be cash or check. And if you do write a check, just make it out to St. Christopher by the River and put in the memo um, calendar so that we know for sure where that money should be going. So um, I'll put those in the guild room and please have a look. And we're already at the end of January, so get them quick. And we already lost two or three this morning to people, so they're going fast. Thank you guys. Is there other news or information you need to share with each other this morning? I know of one birthday uh, anybody else besides Chandler have a birthday or anniversary <laughs> that they're celebrating this week? You're a brave man. Come on down. You've survived all of these birthday blessings so far, so yeah. I, I figure it's probably safe. Chandler, I lay my hands upon you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Holy and living God, we give you thanks for the gift to us all of your beloved child Chandler. And as he begins a new year of life in your service, we ask you to pour out your blessings upon him, that your grace may fill each day of his life in this year to come, and that he may find himself ever more deeply rooted and grounded in the love that can come only from you. We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And Tori's back from honeymoon. <laughs> yeah, from a warm, lovely place to a cold, lovely place. Good to have you back along with your mom. And the very family, good to see you. And Ben and Jenna are here this morning. And would you two introduce yourselves? Yes, my name is Isaac Hilbert. Hi, Nancy. Welcome, welcome. We're glad you're here. Um, you don't have to buy a calendar, but you're welcome to. <laughs> and, um, and we always have refreshments in what we call the guild room, which is through this door, and there's a room in there that looks like a giant living room. So it's always yummy, and we hope you stay and join us for some refreshments. Okay. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Our worship this morning continues on page 367. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with blessed Christopher and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and as we forgive those who trespass against us. And if it is not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
using the prayer on page 365, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of our heart. Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.